Systems Architect at the Customer Care Practice here at UCI. Uh, Michelle has our next poll question up. Are you using predictive analytics in your business today? And I've told Jake not to put C down either. <laughs> Interesting. There's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity apparently that we're going to be very busy in the coming months with you guys. So, <clears throat> with that, um, I'd like to introduce Paul Dwyer. Uh, as Jake said earlier, he cannot be here today, um, but he is here virtually. Uh, Paul has over a decade of experience working at industry leading uh, teams and bringing microservices and AI to market uh, with delightful <laughs> customer experiences. Paul joined Genesis as part of the uh, Alta Cloud acquisition as a sales engineering manager. And uh, Genesis Alta Cloud reduces customer acquisition costs, call handle times, and increases conversation rates through the use of real-time customer journey analytics and predictive engagement. With that, it's up to you, Paul. Take it away. <coughs> Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm going to say, but I'm reading my text message from Travis. That looks like we're alive. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and kick off. Um, hopefully, everybody in the room is ready. Um, welcome to the session, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Genesis Alto Cloud, or in other words, using AI to shape customer journeys. Um, so I must apologize, I couldn't have been there in person. Uh, I had a surgery recently and it's taking a little bit longer than expected to uh, recover from on my, on my foot. But uh, I'd like to thank uh, well, Travis and the organizers there for allowing me to present virtually today and participate. So it's fantastic um, to be able to get this opportunity. And let me, uh, let me jump right into it. Okay, so what do we talk about here when we're talking about Genesis Alto Cloud? Or what really, what really is using AI to shape customer journeys? So first of all, with AI, obviously, you know, being at the event you're at today, you're, th there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of terms, AI, machine learning, uh, different types of it, all the data, where this data coming from, and all that kind of Thing. A, lot of, a lot of folks, when they hear about AI, they start to think about a requirement to build big knowledge bases and they've got some heavy lifting. And while certainly that's important to do that type of AI, you know, in terms of like chatbots and, and that kind of thing, the approach we've taken with customer journey analytics uh, is quite different. Uh, we're using data that actually you've got in abundance already. Uh, and when I say you've got it in abundance, I mean journey data. So data points that are on your website, what people are clicking on, what they're searching for, what they're viewing, how many times they're on the website, uh, where, what region they're based in, all that journey data and attributes is you know, fantastic data that you can use to really feed your AI model uh, to make you know, predictions, how you guide people's uh, buying behavior. And that's the, type of that's the type of data we're talking about here when we're talking about AI. So the analogy that I like to use um, when, we, when I talk about uh, customer journey analytics, 
is that if you think of a normal brick and mortar store, so think of any store that you can walk, just walk into, say, take the Apple store, for example. So you walk into an Apple store, you go in, you see lots of products and salespeople around. So they've got, they've got lots of sales reps. On the sales rep side, as soon as you walk in the door, you can see someone's uh, uh, certain attributes about a person. You can see what age they are, what you know clothes they're wearing. Are they wearing an Apple Watch? Are they carrying an iPad? Are they millennial? All this type of uh, simple attributes that go in that, that register with that sales rep's um, you know uh, interpretation of, of of you as a buyer. And when so, and then you're going to walk into the store and just say you want to buy a new iPhone. So a lot of people buy new iPhones. Maybe there's a new one released lately. But a lot of people they might go and look at other products first. So the sales rep recognizes this journey pattern. They see people, I've seen a lot of people do this before. So they might go over and take a look at a MacBook, look at some of the shiny iPads that they have, and then finally get to the desk that has the iPhone on it and spend some time looking at it. And the sales rep who's got experience, they might have sold five iPhones in the last you know, three days over, over the weekend. They recognize that people are really interested in a particular product because maybe the person tends to pick it up a buyer tends to pick it up when they get very interested, or they spend a lot of time looking at an FAQ card, and then when they're really keen, they might be looking around to make eye contact with the sales rep. So that sales person knows when to engage with someone. Then they can decide how to engage with them. They, 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 whatever has been successful for them, they can say, you know, hey, how are you? Can I help? Something as simple as that. Or maybe their tactic is more, you know, oh, I see that model you have. This is, you know, six bazillion times better than the last model. You know, you're not going to be happy unless you buy this product. And everywhere in between those two strategies for, for selling. But, this, but the, key, the key point is that it's based on that human's interpretation of the sales. So you take that onto the digital journey. Now, how do you repeat that on a website? How do you repeat that in the, the how do you repeat that experience and keep it consistent in the digital world? There's some challenges to that because if you go on to any you know website these days, uh, a lot of the time when you get to the website, you're treated the same. You might get a chat window at a certain page and say, hey, can I help you? What can I help you with today? And then when you do start chatting, you start getting um, you know, you get the, the same questions all the time. You know, what are you here for today? Uh, what's your name? Um, you know, all, all the usual questions that we have to ask. Uh, telling them that we have this amount of items in the cart, all that good stuff. And it, and it takes a little, a little bit of time. That's really the AI that we're talking about. The this out uh, this AI service. That's what's been making the decisions to predict how and when to engage with a particular visitor, and how we really personalize that engagement as well. That's the type of AI that we're talking about here when it comes to customer journeys. There's a couple of challenges with that type of AI when it comes to customer journeys. Obviously, to your call center, you might have you know thousands of calls. There's just a ton of data in there, and it's all logged away in some database. Um, online visits, depending on who you are and what website you have, you know, some customers might have you know, a couple of a you know, couple of million website visits a year, other customers might have 50, 60 million websites. You know, there's just a whole spectrum of data points and all the different types of behavior. So how do you really identify and predict with those customers on the website? In the store, it's easy because, you know, if the store gets too busy, you, you see a line forming outside. You know, or if someone comes in, there's enough sales reps to handle that. But what if there's a huge influx of people on the website, say it's Black Friday, for example, and there's a lot of sales going on. And then how do you actually shape, take it another step, how do you actually shape that customer journey? So how do you move people in a certain direction, you know, to achieve that business outcome of your website? And the business outcome could be really specific to you. In a lot of, um, you know, e-commerce, in, e in an e-commerce case, it's simple. It's people, we want people to add products to cards. We don't want the cards to be abandoned and we want them to make a purchase. That's very straightforward. But other times it could be, you know, call handle time could be your, your, your main goal. So you really want to shape uh, customer journeys and really aiding in that overall customer experience, um, you know, with your, with your organization. So let's get a little bit more specific and how exactly we do that or, can, or how exactly we, you know, uh, um, what, what are we really talking about here with this AI service? So our, our, the, the title we have on this website is Smarter Reps, Happier Customers and Better Business Outcomes. And, and really, you can boil this AI down to two broad brush, two broad brush strokes. Number one is that we're collecting this data. It's going into an AI model somewhere. 
and it's now predicting when to engage. So it's all behind the scenes, no one ever sees it happening. Or no one ever sees what's behind the curtain, they just see the, the end goal. But number two, we have all these data points. So let's give that to the agent when they do engage. So the agent can quickly see all the touch points you've had with your organization. What you fill out in form data, for example, what products you have in your cart, what you've added and what you've removed. So you're really giving an extra insight. So it's those two broad areas that we're going to just to frame up what we're going to talk about here. So the acronym we normally like to use is SNAP. Very straightforward, S-N-A-P. I suppose at the most basic level, this is what we're talking about. So the S in SNAP means see. You want to see what visitors to your website, our call center, are doing before, during, and after interactions. When I say during, I mean literally in real time, as they click on the website, an agent can see what form they're filling out. You know, in order to best help them, as if you were standing in front of them in that store, you can see exactly what they're doing to help them out. And it really cuts out a lot of the, you know, regular, you know, typical questions that you might have to ask somebody. A lot of people looks at, look at the before, before here and say, well, how can you tell what they're doing before you track other websites? Observe, you know, behavior. And the answer is no, we don't observe other people's, you know, other websites. That's not, um, you know, the organization that we're talking about. But what we can do is there's lots of marketing parameters out there. This is where we move customer care into things like sales and marketing. So if you have a Google ad campaign or a Facebook ad campaign or an email marketing campaign, for example, Typically, those campaigns have a call to action. They want to get you on the website. They want their main goal is to get eyes on website and then conversions. So with AutoCloud, those marketing campaigns, they'll have things like UTF parameters embedded in them, virtual tracking modules, it's a marketing campaign tag that they put in the URL. And as soon as they click that URL and get to your website, we know instantly where they've come from so we can see what ad campaign they've, they've come from. So that's something that's more of the on the marketing side of the house. Why would that be useful to someone? Maybe you are in marketing yourself. Why would that be useful to someone in marketing? Because when you send out a marketing email, uh, you have a lot of, you know, you might use a tool like um, Marketo, for example, or HubSpot or one of those tools. And you have metrics. You can see how many people opened the email, how many bumps, how many clicked on the URL. But how do you close the loop? Once those people get to your website, how do you know how many of them actually converted and, you know, went through the buying process? And that's where AutoCloud can kind of close the loop. And you can see that of you know all the visitors to your website last month, 17% came from marketing campaign XYZ. And then of that 17%, 35% of them actually converted and made the purchase. So it kind of closes the loop on metrics a little bit, um, in addition to giving an agent this information. Um, so an agent or a sales rep, they're never expected to be sitting there looking at all this data saying, oh, here's you know a user from Texas or wherever they're for from on the website, maybe I'll engage with that. It is all behind the scenes. So in a sales scenario, we want to notify a certain sales rep. So maybe someone is not a full-time, you know, on a full-time engagement desktop. Maybe they're a sales rep who are on the road, for example, are working in a brick and mortar store. And you want to be able to notify them. So hey, uh, let's do it now, you know, in an outbound campaign scenario, you want to send a notification if they are an, a full-time you know, uh, desktop agent, we can send a notification, say, hey, this person is a VIP customer. I think we should give them a white glove treatment. Um, are they qualified for that white glove treatment? Um, do you want to contact them? So you can say yes and uh, enable the web chat and send them a message and you can, you know, really provide that, you know, white glove experience and get, maybe it's someone you have a pre, uh, a pre relationship with. One talked to a customer recently, they were an online retailer. One of the questions they asked was their in store sales reps are commission based and a lot of their customers more and more now you know they know the size they know the style so they want that person to go online and that person is tending more and more to go online now but they still want the commission so how could they connect their in-store sales rep with that person online so now when that person is on their website and fills more than say five thousand dollars in their cart um that sales rep is going to get notified. They'll get a notification to their phone saying, hey, this person is on the website right now filling the cart. Do you want to connect with them? So it'll actually connect them with their, with their, with their sales rep. So that's uh, just a very simple example of, of notifications. And of course, it's all automated. So I, I, I'm talking a lot about predictive um, engagements here, predicting when to talk to someone. With this model, it's reactive, 
proactive and predictive engagement. So, you know, you can sit out in the same chat window, you can still present your chat widget and say, I'm here when you need me, but we're, we're, we're just really deciding what the cost, what, what way you want to shape your customer journey uh, on the website. And this is all based on our prediction model. So all of those data points, all of those journey data points, where are they going? And what are we doing with them? And how can we tell, how is that useful to the agent? It's literally a predictive index. It's a sliding scale. As soon as you define, uh, take an e-commerce case, you know, make a purchase button, or request a quote, maybe you're an insurance company, for example. That's the first question we'd ask you. We'd say, you know, what's the action of success? What's success at your website? We'd say, when someone pushes that big paper button, that's success. So as soon as we define that action, we're now looking at all the, we're observing the, the behavior and attributes of people that get to that outcome and the unsuccessful ones. So we can now see what success looks like, what the trend of success looks like on that digital journey. So say someone is what we call a heat seeker, they know what they want, we will just leave them be. They, you know, there's no need to engage with them because they already are looking like they're going to make that conversion. But what if they get 90% of the way down the path and then start falling away back to 20%? Say they start looking at an FAQ, they, they're obviously stuck. That's when we can decide to engage. So it's a very dynamic, it's very dynamic in nature in how you engage with that someone. One of the examples is with another customer, it's a financial, uh, it's a bank, uh, and they have an eight-step uh, mortgage application process. So they want that they came, they came and they said they want, we want to increase mortgage conversion rates. The number of people starting the process versus the number of people finishing it is very low. We want to help people that are in trouble. So again, we let them, whoever was running through the eight steps as normal, Compared to the success curve, they were just let, let run, no problems. We weren't going to provide any barriers. But what happens when people start stalling out and they start dragging and, and they get stuck at step six, for example? The, the AI now looks at step six and says, oh, I see you're having trouble. I'm going to help you now. I'm going to connect you with an expert for, say, that's the credit history step. And that's the nature of the engagement there. So that's just a little example of how that prediction model works. So it's based on buying interest or need for support based on things like personas, customer segmentation, and of course that behavior that, uh, that we have on the, on the journey. So one of the things that I mentioned was, I talked a little bit about a marketing case, I talked a little bit about a customer care case and a sales case, so that was three functions. Every agency's value is the little tag we have here, so how exactly are different functions benefiting? <coughs> Because we're talking about a digital experience and a care experience, you really, it's unavoidable that you're talking to, not that you want to avoid it, but it, it's a very common case, I should say, where you, you, you end up talking to different stakeholders. You know, these are the people that uh, might be interested in this product, it might be bought for customer care, this tool, this, this um, care center tool, but now it becomes very applicable to marketing, it becomes very applicable to the sales team, as there's you know, deep integrations with those marketing automation or CRM tools. So inside sales, I mean, I gave some examples of that. That's sort of understanding and identifying website visitors' needs, and you want to be able to reach out to them, whatever way your staff to reach out to them, if it's a chat, if it's a call, if it's an email, whatever it is. But that's really the inside sales case. The e-commerce case, I touched on a little bit, but what I did mention were things around content offers, personalized content offers. Now, if you're in the e-commerce world or the marketing world, you don't know what a content offer is. Or actually, if you've ever been on a website, you know what a content offer is. Um, so with CMS tools or marketing tools, you can provide this content offer. It's very simple. It's something that Agile Cloud also offers, uh, or Genesis um, also offers with this Agile Cloud product. But the difference with this is we're doing it based on personalization. So we're offering this content offer based on deep, um, you know, behavioral analysis that we've done. So we're, you're really getting, instead of somebody buying, looking at a pair of shoes, now for the next two days, any website they go to the advertisements, they'll see with shoes. This is far more specific than that. You know, you can see if someone's buying a particular product, um, say it's a fridge, for example, you can now, at time of checkout, in real time, and that's key, in real time, just that you also know that that person is a small business owner based on their behavior. You can offer them uh, these, um, you know, do an up, you know, upsell, cross-sell on products that are uh, consistent <laughs> with what other small business owners are buying that are buying fridges, so if it's a restaurant, whatever it is, so, you know, maybe it's a freezer that goes with it, maybe it's items that go inside, so it's that real time 
personalization of that engagement type where ads are totally, or where our AI becomes quite different. With customer service, it's more about the agent. It's more about giving that customer journey data directly to the agent. So if you went, go online to complain about something, um, if you're, you know, just an example of a TV, a cable provider, whatever it is, something that you're having issues with, and you've had to explain yourself five times to, to, to five different people, you know, the problem, right from the basics, and they'll take you all through the troubleshooting steps, and you, you become, you know, obviously frustrated. That's obviously an example of a, of a poor, um, you know, a poor setup. But what we would like to do is once you call in, say it's your first phone call, but you've already had a chat with someone on the web, we want to be able to offer that agent direct to their desktop your complete journey history. So even though it's your phone number, maybe you entered your phone number, you know, when you're starting to chat, it says give your name, your email address, your phone number. We we have that phone number. When you then call into your, your call center, we want that journey to pop. We want to be able to, that person to be able that agent to be able to see, oh, I see, you know, I, I see you purchased that, I saw you had, you know, this um, package, uh, I can see this is the steps you've taken to already, uh, you know, uh, uh, resolve your issue. So you're, again, you're just trying to cut out as much of those rep rep repetitive questions as you can. That's really about the customer service case. And then finally, the marketing. I spoke a little bit about that. I talked about those marketing campaign metrics um, that we can uh, that we can connect. And there's there's a you know that's obviously very high level, but that's. Uh, that's just give you an idea of how it can be used for marketing. So, just before I jump into a little demo, and I want to sh I, I want to show you this um, this in action. Some of the benefits uh, that some of our customers have seen is identifying and engage at the best moments, accelerate revenue conversion, obviously, and then all of these. So that being you know the the sales case, obviously all of this is based around customer experience, depending on on the function. Uh, some of the more traditional, you know, care center uh, metrics that we have, obviously you want to resolve issues quickly, giving them the right implementation, the right information, reduce calls perhaps with, you know, content offers or more of a self-serve model. Um, obviously, first call resolution and reducing bounce and abundance. These are, these are really the benefits that we, we've spoken, at just, spoken about just for, just for a quick recap. So that said, I'm going to jump over to a demo. Um, if there's any questions in the room. Um, hopefully Travis would be able to maybe might be able to unmute or maybe if you want to type them into the chat window if any of the questions come in and I'll be able to take a look um, while I'm switching over to the demo here. Paul, can you hear us? Yeah, hello, we can hear. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Excellent. Hopefully you heard the last uh, 35 minutes, did you? <laughs> and you can start over. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Quick quiz, one accent, oh my gosh, can you tell? <laughs> uh, awesome. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to a demo now. Um, and I'm going to show you all this this in action. So hopefully on the screen, actually before, before I say that, was there any questions? Not so far. You've done a great okay. job. Everybody's so overwhelmed with the information you're going to come here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I've successfully put people to sleep. Um, so, so here we are on, the, on, on my desktop. Now, on the left-hand side, you'll see a visitor. So this is just, I'm going to show an example of a website here. It's going to be an insurance website that I'm going to bring up. And then on the right hand side, I'm going to show an agent or a rep. So this is your, your sales agent or your, or your care rep, depending on what you have. And this is my workspace web here. This is my, uh, my, my Genesis desktop. But I'm also going to open another tab. I'm going to give you an under the hood look here at, um, I'm going to give you an under the hood look at the machine learning data. So to give you an idea of what data it is that's been seen. And this live now dashboard, this, again, this is not the agent desktop, this is just under the hood and a view as to what the machine learning is, is gathering. So to get to my uh, insurance website, I'm going to pretend I clicked on an advertisement there. I was on ForbesMagazine.com and I clicked on an advertisement looking at insurance to get over to my universal insurance page. So if I get over to my live now site, because this is you know my first experience with this insurance website, this is a brand new use case. I'm looking over at my machine learning dashboard and I can see that someone unknown has just come onto the website. 
And I know this is me because I'm based out of Canandaigua, New York. So I want to click into this new, brand new customer journey here that we have. So it looks pretty blank. We don't have much information about the individual so far. We can see that, you know, the location. We can see an ISP provider, how long they've been on the page. We can also see that I'm, you know, on a desktop, a Mac, and I'm using Google Chrome. So you're getting some basic attributes about the person to begin with. One other thing to notice, though, is that there's a tab here called Campaign Details. So I mentioned, you know, I was pretending in my demo, I clicked on advertisements on Forbes magazine. And that's reading those marketing parameters, those UTM parameters that I mentioned. So I can see here that, you know, I clicked on a campaign called Wireless Hospitality. It was a banner on one of the pages. It was Forbes magazine. And the term here is that I might have on was um, Banking Professional. So before I've even engaged or done much, I can see a lot of good information about that visitor. So let's take a look. As I, as I roam around the website here and I start clicking on different tabs, you can see that a journey is updating in real time as I click through. You can also see um, it's not just clicks. It could be you know viewing a VOD, uh, downloading a product. Pretty much whatever can be done on the website um, can, be, can be viewed on the, uh, on the web page. So I typed in the search bar there. I just looked for first time buyer. That's what I typed in, first time buyer. And that's reflected on my journey here. I can see the little uh, search um, not, uh, icon. Uh, I can also see that I matched a persona called first time buyer. So in this case, this is a very basic example of a content offer. So that was not you know, predictably triggered. That was basically just because I searched for something we were able to trigger that content offer, just to show you what it looks like. This is fully customizable, and this is driven from the AI service, Alto Genesis, Alto Cloud. Um, fully customizable, so you can use that you know, for, for, for any number of things. Maybe it's a set of button you want to direct people the way um, you know, to reduce handle time. But some of the information I have, so it's still anonymous. I still have got no personal information, but I now, start, I now have outcome scores. So on this website, the two defined business outcomes are I want people to make a payment, and I want people to request a quote. So I'm on the claim center here, so I'm not likely to request a quote. I, I was, I was clicking on the right tabs, I was doing the right, having the right behavior, but that has gone back to 0% now because I'm on the claim center. People who request quotes don't typically start at the claim center. Um, make payments, uh, maybe, you know, I have done something on a, a, on a real world website that's, that's taken me to 70%, but now I'm back down at 40. So it's just an idea as to how likely I am to achieve that outcome. But let's move to the website another little bit. I see enter your email here on the top right. Maybe it's an actual login, which would be you know, very easy to get people's details. Maybe it's sign up for a newsletter um, it, 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 as well. There's any number of ways that websites tend to, uh, to, tend to you know, ask for people's email addresses. So I'm going to click log in there. And as soon as I do, the service instantly recognizes who I am. They see, oh, that's Paul. Um, you know, obviously, he's been here before. He's got an account. We have his name. We have his contact phone number and email address. Uh, so it becomes an identity. We now can see somebody who's, we now see specifically who we're talking dealing with on the website. But there's been no need to engage with me yet. I'm still just gathering data. This is just all under the hood. So let's click on auto insurance here. What is the, um, main goals of the website is to get, there's a, we have a campaign called luxury car quote. So we want people to ask for a quote who are driving, you know, a nice car, Ferrari, Porsche, whatever it is, obviously because they're going to be higher premiums. So let's fill in some data here. Let's fill in the license plate and my zip, clo zip code. I'm going to click submit. You see the form data. I can see exactly what was entered in here. I can see the license plate and zip code from the machine learning side. But over on my application form, I have a request quote. So I'm going to unmake here. This is the field in particular we're looking at. We're going to see what make the person has that's going to add the quote. So in this case, I'm going to type, maybe it's been a great year. I've won the billion and a half lottery that was on recently, and I bought myself a Bugatti here. So I'm going to put in that into our field. But for some reason, I get cold feet. I put in good information, but I haven't converted to yet. So I'm going to click on life insurance here. Now what's happened there is the system has seen that somebody has put in, you know, uh, a, an expensive car, but, but, haven't, but has not got through with the purchase. So that actually automatically adds this person to an outbound campaign that our agents are, are primed and, and, and ready to, to work on. So it's an outbound luxury car. I'm going to click accept back over on my desktop here. 
And once I click accept, I'm presented with information about the person. Now, all I know so far really is that they've come from, they've gotten added, um, you know, I can see their contact information, they've gotten added to this campaign. But if I click on my Alto Cloud tab here, I can really go into detail on how serious this person really was about buying that car do, or getting a quote for that car. Again, looking in depth at that journey history, I can see exactly what they put in. I can also see, because they logged in, I can see the journey history that they had. Didn't matter, doesn't really matter what platform they were on, I can tell that this person has now been on the journey, they've been on this website a lot, as you can see, probably based in New York, because I can see um, that's where most of their locations are. Um, maybe they were on holidays or on a work trip, and I can see one from Detroit, Michigan here. So I decide, yeah, this person looks like um, a great prospect. Uh, I want to, I want to actually talk with this one. Now, obviously, this is a very aggressive use case. Typically, it's just going to be a web chat that they offer and say, "Hey, can I help you?" In this case, I'm actually going to call the number that that's made the um, that's made the uh, quote or abandon the quote, I should say. So once you click call number, that's just going to call the number we have on record. So you can probably hear my phone um, dialing there, which I don't need to answer. I can hang up the phone there. That's obviously just an example of an aggressive you know, sales scenario where I'm, where I'm making a phone call. But you can imagine I, that could just as easily have been a chat and we could have offered a chat at that key time when the person was banning the quote. So a lot of the time, you know, you can tag personas and say that person was a hot prospect for a quote. And then you can start to compare how many hot prospects actually converted. So say 75% of hot prospects converted. So what's happening that other 25%? Why are we losing those prospects? That's the 25% of you know, real business that we could be getting. And that's the key time that you want to offer these engagements um, when, you, when, you, when you're losing those prospects. So I'm going to close out of that and wrap up that call. Now that was a very simple case of outbound. Obviously the traditional um, more inbound um, you know, behavior works as well. If you're at the claim center, for example, and, you know, you're offered a chat, or you just want to um, get a, you know, provide a proactive chat. It, it works the exact same way. I can start a chat here. I can put in a subject to call to claim. I can start, and this is obviously more. Oh, there was an issue starting your chat session. Oh well, well typically when you start your chat session, um, what will happen is in the support case, the agent gets the chat. Same scenario gets the same information presented to them, but instead of trying to determine, or, you know, do we want to call this person, you can just uh, cut right to the chase here and see, I see what they're, you know, I see what personas they're tagged at, I see what they've done. You can also into, I said there was native integrations with CRM, so you, same way campaign shows up, you'd see a little um, bubble here for whether it's Salesforce or a homegrown CRM, whatever you have. So you can see what product they purchased. So you already know a lot about the customer before you, the support person even um, starts the conversation. So it's about getting that, that information, not burying the agent with information. Obviously you can see here, it's pretty, you know, we tried, done a lot of user experience work to keep this very digestible, you know, within the space of a few minutes for the person. Um, but you want to give them the correct information. Um, so that's just a very you know, straightforward case of support. So with that, I'm going to end my chat. I'm going to close that one up. Oh, and I've got another chat. Let me reject that one. So I'm going to park the demo there, and I'm going to go back and just to talk just briefly about what we just saw there. Now, the next slide I'm going to show you is what I would call a architecture slide. It's not designed to uh, confuse the situation. There is a, a kind of a, a flow to the process here. As you can see, there's a lot of information. But working from, you know, just talking at a very high level without going into the flow here, just talking from left to right, the events that we, we saw there was journey behavior. Now, say you are already tracking personas inside your org through, uh, you know, Marketo, or Adobe Marketing Cloud, or Salesforce Marketing Cloud, or any number of those. We, there is a native integration with Adobe Cloud. When we see that person come in, and we can identify them, maybe it's through a login, maybe it's sign up for newsletters, it'll just ping that system that you have inside your organization. So it kind of becomes a hub for, for that data, those data sources. A lot of the times, care data and marketing data can be somewhat dispersed inside an organization. Uh, so we're now kind of combining the two sources. So both, you know, you can actually drive 
care for someone that's based on sales information that you already have about the person, what products they've purchased, what products are they considering purchase. So we can ingest that information and you know, tag a persona with that with that someone. And vice versa, if they're, you know, we have a lot of knowledge on the on the care team, we can actually push that back and let the sales guys know that when when, when they go to talk to them. So web events was obvious, uh, you know, it was the example we spoke most about. Um, call center integration is how are they behaving when they when they dial when they dial your, your support number, what IPR branch are they are they going down? You know, how what path have they taken to get to where they are now? So the agent when they get connected to the agent, can see, oh, I see what number they dialed. Um, this is what the journey looks like. And it'll be exactly what you saw on the digital journey, except it's just going to be labeled by your branch, and you'll be able to see, instead of adding something to a shopping cart, it's more likely to be person press three for you know current customer with problems. So that's how they got they got to you. Um, it's quite an open. Um, we, you know, because there is a lot of data sources, it, this is an open system as much as possible. So we can ingest custom events from, you know, custom tools. You know, every type of, you know, talking to, you know, different customers. A lot of people out there have homegrown tools and things like that as well. And all that data gets fed into this event processing um, system, this 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 cloud system that we have. The cloud system, obviously is something that you know with all cloud services right where's my data going who's holding who's hosting that I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it a little bit about it in the next in the final slide but um just as a high level this data just passes through a model it's not data we store um it's data that we push back onto your system wherever that is whatever storage or compliance systems that you have so you know our service is technically considered a data processor whereas you the customer would be um, a data controller uh, so that's you know about SAP two compliance and things like that. But once that gets churned out, the most you know again we do not want to overwhelm the agent. So that's where we saw those very simple pro outcome probabilities. So that can either drive the engagement or just be used to inform the agent. That customer journey you want to see you know all the behaviors that people have whether it's in your website or in your um, telephony branches, which is which is the second part of this image here. Segmentation. Experience has shown us that agents do not like to look at a lot of segmentation. You just want to see, is it a house prospect? What air product area, depending on your case. And what I've seen customers use this far is tag the person if you shouldn't be talking to them. So if you are a sales rep and your chat is used specifically for sales, and this person is looking for support and you can't handle that, you want to know that immediately rather than find out five, 10 minutes into the conversation that they're looking for support and not sales. So if they've looked at you know support areas, uh, maybe have an open ticket, you want to flag the sales agent straight away and say, oh, I need to, and they'll give you your redirect to, this is where you'll find the chat on that. And then reviving whatever type of engagement uh, you have. And finally, uh, just to mention a little bit about you know the secure aspect of this, you know a lot of people, you know there's a lot going on with things like Facebook and all those tools out there at the moment and, and how data is being handled. A lot of folks will know um, who have you know branches or subsidiaries or you know who've done many business over in Europe that GDPR is a big thing. You see a lot of those cookie um, pop-ups now saying, "Can we do this? Can we do that? Can we even observe the data?" So our Engineering team is actually based over in Europe, so a lot of the GDPR stuff happened, you know, back. We will, we, all the you know European customers were compliant. I think it was the twentieth of May of this year. I think was the was the date where, where that happened. But basically, what GDPR is, you need to ask for consent to do anything. You need to ask, you know, if you want to track data, if you want to offer a chat, um, all that kind, all that stuff. That's all built into the product. So if you're just purely a North American operation, obviously you don't have to worry about that. But if you're someone that has operations over in Europe, that's something you have to turn on. So instead of all this, you know, customer journey analytics being on by default, it's just something that you have to build into a cookie disclaimer um, or something like that. So that's behavior that's that's native inside in the uh, in the product. So. I'm not sure how big the screen is. I know it's a big room there, but you might see this little image at the bottom right of a man in a spacesuit trying to fit himself into a little uh, hole in the wall. So this was uh, an image that one of our business development guys uh, gave. I've never seen the game show myself, but the point of the image is that a visitor to your website, or the guy in the spacesuit here, is trying to fit himself through a customer experience, a very defined 
rigid experience. It's not personalized. It's something that's, you know, maybe by the time the wall gets up to him, he might not even be able to fit through the wall, for example. Or, you know, he's, he's trying to bend in a certain way to get, you know, fit that experience. But what you want in reality is the opposite. You want the wall to be able to, you know, create a shape to allow that person through, a very personalized view of that person, and to be able to cater for that those buying needs or that need for support um, on the digital experience. And that's something that's traditionally been quite difficult to do, but that's really the type of AI that we're talking about here. We want to be able to personalize and, you know, cut down all those hassles that are associated with um, handling care cases or sales cases when you're doing your buying journey and really add that human touch uh, to the buying experience, for example. So with that, that's the uh, end of the session. If anybody has any questions, um, either now, um, I'd be happy to answer them. And if not, I'd be happy to, happy to follow up later as well. Of course, I've left my um, LinkedIn up here as well if anyone does have any follow-up questions. Anyone else have a question? All right, thank you, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Have a good